Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Red Raptor Writes. Recently, I started this new series called Paleo Myths, where we look at popular tropes regarding extinct animals, then see whether the evidence supports them or not. The series started off by analyzing whether Giganotosaurus was in fact the largest predatory dinosaur and by extension, the largest predator to walk the earth. Now we move on to a new myth that I've seen a lot of comments about. I don't have any particular order to these, so I figured, why not? Today, I'm going to look at Pachycephalosaurus, Stegimoloch, and Dracorex to figure out the relationship between them. Are these separate North American Pachycephalosaurids, or really all different growth stages of Pachycephalosaurus? Let's dig this up. Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis is one of those classic dinosaurs that appears in all kinds of dino media, famous for its bulbous dome skull that they may have used to ram into each other like bighorn sheep, though that's a myth for another day. This animal roamed western North America between 68 and 66 million years ago during the final Maastrichtian stage of the Lake Cretaceous in the well-known Hell Creek and Lance formations. Some of its neighbors were Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Nanotyrannus. <laughs> okay, okay, another video for another day. But what if I told you that there were other dome-headed pachycephalosaurids living alongside the family's namesake? Meet Dracovex and Stigimoloch, two smaller relatives from generally the same time and place. Named in 1983, Stigimoloch spinifer is potentially the most demonic name given to a dino, literally translating it to Styx demon. In Greek mythology, the Styx river leads souls to the afterlife, separating the lands of the living and the dead. Then Moloch comes from a Canaanite god to whom people would sacrifice their children. Man, this poor herbivore went about its life, died, and then 66 million years later was named after these horrors. Poor guy. The creature itself is notable for its smaller size, larger spikes pointing from the back of its head, and much smaller dome than its cousin. As for Dracorex Hogwartsia, well, it's as the name sounds, the Dragon King of Hogwarts, named after the school in Harry Potter. Those books and movies were never my thing, but I'm sure someone out there can get a kick out of this. Described in 2006 by Dr. Robert Bakker et al., it lived a very short life before Jack Horner attacked. Draco Rex was the smallest of the bunch and lacked a dome entirely, though it still possessed some gnarly head spikes. Maybe you can already see where this is going. We have three very similar genera from the same time and place, and they're organized by size. The larger they get, the more pronounced their dome is, and less pronounced their spikes are. This has led paleontologists Jack Horner, Holly Woodward, and Mark Goodwin to put the validity of the newer genre into question, claiming how these two represent growth stages of the larger Pachycephalosaurus. Okay, that's enough! Look, what I'm trying to say is, you're just a kid. Now, I know I've had problems with Jack Horner in the past, such as his ridiculous scavenger rex theory, attempts to build a chickenosaurus, and his questionable love life. None of that changes, but let's not let that cloud our judgment on this completely separate issue. As they say, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Just because he's had huge L's before, doesn't mean he can't be right about anything. I will admit that although there are still some like Bakker who view these genre as separate, Horner's ideas have gained more traction, but which of these camps is right though? Unfortunately for the purposes of this video, proving that one fossil animal is a juvenile or adult form of another is a difficult task. It's not like we can grow a Draco Rex and observe what happens. Also, fossils don't come with labels, with species names branded on them. So even if we can tell what kind of dinosaur it was, nailing it down to a species level is all kinds of trouble. It also doesn't help that Pachycephalosaurus and its potential growth stages are very rare, with only two decent older specimens found 80 years ago compared to the dozens of trikes and rexes from the same ecosystem. These two are the Sandy Specimen Holotype and AMNH 1696. 
the largest and probably most mature of the bunch. Without a wide range of fossils to compare, this job is far more difficult, needing to fill in the gaps, making more assumptions. Heck, even in well-represented fauna like Tyrannosaurus, there's still tons of debate over what counts as a juvenile or not. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Alright, well, first order of business here, is there a precedent for this kind of growth? Do we have flat-headed juvenile pachycephalosaurids growing into dome-headed adults? Actually, yes. This is the exact situation with the earlier relative Stegoceras from the Dinosaur Park formation. Over the past 20 years, starting with Mark Goodwin, it's been proposed and confirmed in multiple studies that the smaller, flat-headed Ornatotholus is a dubious genus, instead representing a juvenile Stegoceras. So we know that this can happen. Did this occur consistently? Did all pachycephalosaurids change like this? Well, not really. The Asian homalocephalae was considered a young, flat-headed form of prenocephalae. That was until actual juveniles were found appearing nearly identical to adults, just smaller. So while the idea is possible, we can't rely on relatives for clear answers. Next up, let's look at the different specimens' ages. If adult Dracorex fossils have been found, then obviously it's not just a phase, dad. With the histological analysis of each skull, Jack Horner and Mark Goodwin found the skulls of the creatures in question to not be fully fused, a feature indicative of growing animals. As each animal ages, the bones fuse. What they also found was a lack of clearly set stages. They didn't wake up one day as Draco Rex, then the next as Stiggy Moloch, and finally as the Packy we all know and love. Instead, they found a growth continuum. It is worth noting that the most complete pachycephalosaurus we have, the sandy specimen, is a transitional form, a subadult between what has been called Sticky Moloch and the older specimen. It seems that as the individuals got older, their dome size increased. The cranial spikes grew as they went from juvenile to subadult, but were reabsorbed as they reached sexual maturity. Ornamentation on the Draco and Stiggy do show evidence of plasticity with spongy, vascular bone that can be morphed over time. Meanwhile, Pachycephalosaurus had more solid, dense bone fully developed. This kind of plasticity isn't unheard of in dinosaurs. Yes, there's Stegoceras, but even the Triceratops dramatically altered the shape of its skull as it aged. Triceratops in the grand scheme of Dinosauria is relatively close too, as both were within the clade Marginocephalia. Dinosaurs can shapeshift. The evidence points to Dracorex being a juvenile and Stiggy Moloch representing subadults. But are there any young Pachycephalosaurus? Like with Prenocephalae and Homalocephalae, that would kind of throw a wrench in the whole thing if we have small, normal Pachys. This is where things get weird, because Dr. Robert Bacher claims to have seen one. Where it is? Uh, I don't know. Probably in a private collection or something. Bacher tends to do this. It happens in the Nano Debate 2, where he's like, Well, I've seen definitive evidence, so I know I'm right, but those fossils are hidden away, so you can't see. Gee, thanks. That helps. Uh, not at all. I'm not accusing him of lying, but such claims are untrustworthy. If scientifically significant specimens are locked away from prying eyes, then we can't use them. The wonderful thing about science is that it's repeatable. One person's discoveries can be revisited, looked over, and reevaluated. This occurs in paleontology all the time. Just look at Spinosaurus. If a study isn't replicable, then it can't be tested. No one can challenge or build upon it. If there are any irregularities to note, we can't find out. That's the problem with these private collections. Access to fossils is limited, so paleontologists can't freely study them and check each other's work. So I'm not going to claim that such a specimen doesn't exist, but we have nothing to talk about since it can't be thoroughly studied. And if paleontologists do have access to these specimens and Bakker is studying them, then publish your study already. Let us see the evidence. Man, shit. No. Recently in 2016, new material was described from a very small individual. Not much, only a few skull fragments, though still significant. The position of the spikes and horns were still similar to those found in all three Hell Creek creatures, showing a clear link. 
Now we know that their positions were established early on, then change shape with age. The baby, as Goodwin noted, lands in a predictable growth curve, so we can more reliably chart Pachycephalosaurus ontogeny. Lastly, let's look at stratigraphy. Did specimens for the three of them come from the same rock? Are they from the same time and place? Well, interestingly enough, that's still up in the air. All three of them come from Maastrichtia, North America, but recent analyses have noted that the confirmed Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis came from slightly lower, earlier rock than the specimens previously assigned to Stigimoloch spinifer. That means Stiggy came from later in the Maastrichtian. This slight difference in stratigraphy has led expert David Evans in a 2021 paper to use Stiggy Moloch as its own genus. He, along with other paleontologists like our reoccurring buddy Thomas Holtz, have also flirted with the idea of Stiggy Moloch as still a junior synonym to Pachycephalosaurus, but as a separate species, erecting P. spinifer. Speciation isn't a crazy thought here either. It occurred in Triceratops as well, starting as T. horridus, but then evolving into T. prorsus within the same formations. Maybe Pachy experienced the same process. I gotta be honest though, unlike Triceratops of which there are like 50 skulls, we only have a handful of decent Pachy specimens. Being so rare with only one fully grown individual, yeah, it's no surprise that we haven't found adults in younger Hell Creek Rock. It seems more likely to me that their absence is more due to rarity rather than speciation. Although I need to tread carefully because lack of evidence for one thing does not count as evidence for another. I can't make assumptions based on fossils we don't have. Also, there aren't even adults found for P. spinifer. Maybe we should wait and see on that one. If we have subadult P. spinifer fossils, yet they chart nicely as growing P. wyomingensis fossils, then we should wait for more material before claiming it to be a valid new species. A paper could come out next week, next year, or in another lifetime, but I'm not about to jump the shark. Like I said previously, we do have a lot to consider here. Proving that fossils represent ontogenetic stages of one another is a challenge for sure, requiring many lines of evidence. I came into this video with an open mind, willing to go wherever the evidence took me. After doing the research and writing the script, I'd say the challenge has been met. In my opinion, the myth of Draco Rex and Stiggy Moloch being invalid, instead representing younger forms of Pachycephalosaurus, is... Most likely. I can't say with absolute certainty that they're both P. Wyomingensis, they may come from different ages, and potentially there are some significant heads floating around, but overall, the evidence we have so far seems very favorable to the myth. Just a kid. An older than my son. Jack Horner, I can't say that you've redeemed yourself, such power doesn't belong to me, but this was an impressive catch. Nicely done. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.